So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sharon Whiteman, and it's my great pleasure and privilege to be here every week with each and every one of you and with my colleagues, Diana Hunter and Gary Knapp. Uh, we love partnering with Australasia and the globe to you know, work towards making Mantec the, the legend that it always already is in our hearts and minds. Now, today we're very privileged to have Ray Robbins. He's a legend, absolute legend, founder of Mamatech. He's a three-star presidential, platinum presidential director and an author, and he's known as the Road Warrior. He's traveled worldwide to support, train, and inspire all he meets while ethically championing the Mamatech brand. Ray is from Flower Mound, Texas, and has 30 plus years of experience in the sales profession. He has a Bachelor of Science in Bio Biology and Chemistry and served in the military flying helicopters in Vietnam where he earned the rank of major. Ray is an active member in his community receiving the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year Award and has a real heart for children, especially our Mission 5 Million. The North American Giving Spirit Award is named in his honor, which says it all. Ray co-published the book, Get a Grip with his son, Kevin, which outlines both everything you need to know and why you should create a residual income in your lifetime. Not only has his and his family's lives been blessed, he's been a witness to countless thousands of changed lives. As the founder of Manatech and the former member of Manatech's board of directors, Ray is indeed in position to be of the highest support to associates. He carries the heart of Manatech on his sleeve and is passionate to help the worldwide associate base. So today we're really delighted, Ray, and thank you for persevering um, in these technological challenging times. <laughs> we, we, we just got you in here by the skin of our teeth, so thank you. So I might just go off camera and then you just call on me and I can pop back in at any time, okay? Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very much, Sharon. I appreciate the fact that you have had the longest running Zoom call of anybody in the world in 44 countries, there's no one that's kept the regular weekly call going like Sharon Whiteman. And uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but on the leadership call that Landon and I did a couple of days ago, I lifted you up big time. I bragged like everything about you and uh, said it's so neat to see people be persistent no matter what. You know, Murphy does work with us. Murphy's law says that if it can go wrong, it will. And, and I'm uh, crying and laughing, Rick. <laughs> for some unknown reason, Murphy has decided to visit me a whole lot lately. And uh, we've had all kinds of crazy things happen with our house, all kinds of crazy things happen with grandkids. And uh, I, I was asking Diana a couple of days ago, I said, are you okay? And she said, I don't know what it is. It's the stress or something. It's just, I don't feel like I'm functioning properly. And nothing around me seems like it's functioning properly. I could tell you stories for the next hour just about how Murphy has been <laughs> involved with us. I'll tell you something that's going ongoing right now. I have a son and a grandson that are headed to Peru in the morning at 8 a.m. for a one-week mission trip. And it doesn't look like that's going to go now. Mm -hmm. They've been putting that together. They had to raise $2,400 each. For the trip, a whole bunch of people from his from the grandson's college that are doing it. And uh, it looks like after all this effort, if it goes at all, it's not going to go on time. And I have a lot of friends that are in, in London. And I was supposed to have had some conference calls with them today. There was a number of things that we were going to do together. They did not happen. They never happened. And we worked as long as you did just a minute ago, trying to make this thing happen. I decided it's not going to happen. I left my wife's office. I went into a countertop. I had my notes of stuff that I wanted to talk about. And then she yells out, I think I've got them. It finally has showed up. I think it's here. And the people all over the world today have gone through this kind of difficulty with technology. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people stuck at airports right now. Most of the banks in Europe never opened for business today. The, the, all the problems started during the course of the night. And I had a bunch of stuff that I was doing with the number one bank in London, and it didn't happen. So we're going to have to retackle it all 
Monday. And they said it might not even be working Monday. We might start mm -hmm. on it Monday and get it going again on Tuesday. So it's definitely crazy times. Technology does make a difference. Now, this allows me to tell you something I learned about 20 years ago. Manitech had already been well underway for about 10 years, and we had some obstacles. And somebody came out with a book called Who Moved My Cheese? And that became my favorite book to recommend to people that your cheese will be moved. See, Murphy moved cheese. <laughs> Murphy gets real involved. And the whole concept of the book was that if cheese is something that you rely on and somebody moves that cheese, you're in a deficit. You've got to find out a different way to get cheese or a different place that cheese is available. It's a very well-written book. And uh, in essence, it's telling you, keep your attitude solution-oriented, no matter what you run into. Something that we've been running into in North America lately is the FDA has decided to inspect our amber toast. And when they decide to inspect something, they take their own good time doing it. And we have been out of business with Amber Toast Life and Amber Toast Classic for several weeks now. People are going nuts. There are so many people that rely on that product. And uh, today, I think that we finally got a conversation started with a senator from Texas that's going to throw themselves into this. Our product since its beginning has had no tr troubles, no adversities, nothing. There's no reason for a regulatory body to put us out of business with a product that we've sold over $5 billion worth. And uh, <laughs> it can't do it right now. So hopefully we have run into somebody else that dislikes regulation as much as most businesses. And it's going to go to back for us so we can get that corrected. Point I'm making to all of you is people are going to move your cheese. You're going to have your cheese moved. You're, you're going to have everything just rocking along smooth as can be. And uh, you're going to hit a curb and bust a tire and a wheel or something along those lines. Uh, I have been telling people for years that I don't believe budgets work. I've had to be on boards for a long time. I've had to be in a position of putting budgets together. But I have never seen one work ever, personal or corporate. Never. So my, my answer to the fact that budgets don't work is to make more. Make an excess. Make more than you can possibly spend on anything that comes to your mind that you want to do to promote your family or promote your business. If you're making a certain income with a position right now, it's not enough. I don't care how much it is. It's not enough. Make more. So my two words are make more. And I, I've had those words for a lot of years and I have been in a position of excess for 25 years now. There's no way that finances can take me down at all because I have enough excess. And I have enough excess that I am today giving away over a million dollars a year. So if you have a whole lot of excess, you can find some other very creative things to help other people as well. Uh, I told Sharon that I would offer a couple of comments and then let her ask questions. She's real good at interviewing. I wanna tell you a couple of other things that I've been telling people lately. A long time ago, we found out that Harper's Biochemistry had a new edition in 1996 that said that our immune system is run by a set of sugars. Can you believe that? We had just patented in several countries the first product ever that had the sugars that we had already figured out had something to do with benefiting the immune system. And then the book that most North American doctors learn biochemistry from has a new chapter. Chapter 56 is a brand new chapter in that book. And it was all about glycans. Well, we use that book a lot for the credibility of our product, the credibility of sugars having something to do with your immune system, communication. And then for some reason or other, we got away from it. We have a, 
a habit of having great tools available to us that we use for a certain time frame, and then we feel like we have to move on to something different. Well, I have a bunch of people in my life right now that are moving back to Harper's Biochemistry. Anytime they're trying to work with a health professional or somebody that's skeptical, somebody that's highly academic, we're getting them back into Harper's Biochemistry and we're having them go to their library, check it out, read the chapter on glycans. There has been a new revised chapter since that one that came out in 1996. If their, if their edition is the 1996 edition, tell your library that their book is outdated and they get the they need to get the newest one. The book cost over 200 bucks. It's extremely valuable to people that are learning biochemistry in health professions, not just in the US and Canada, but in many other parts of the world. And uh, I just love what that book says about glycans. There you go, somebody's holding it up, hallelujah. That is a fantastic source, it's a fantastic tool. When people that know the credibility, the longtime credibility of Harper's Biochemistry, and you show them that there's a chapter that in essence describes ambrotose and what it can do, it's amazing how it just turns their mind around. If Harper's Biochemistry covered something like that, it turns them around. Also, in that chapter, it says something about all of the papers that are being written all around the world about this new science, maybe being the most important science that's ever been discovered by mankind and is finally being properly researched and editorialized. So use that Harper's Biochemistry when you're trying to convince people about the science that really exists behind the product that we've sold $5 billion worth of product on. Uh, I also wanted to tell you, because you're in Australia, to use a doctor that's in your country that wrote an, a great study about us on cognitive capability being improved by our product. Dr. Talitha Best is in your country. Incredible. Reputation, get her paper. Make sure everybody has a copy of her paper that talks about how you can improve your cognitive capability. I think it's pretty important to all of us, no matter where we're at in life. It's definitely important to people that are at my place in life. There's so many people that are buying things that give you memory enhancers, things that help you get rid of the fog that developed when you get to late 70s like me. Well, that paper on what Ambertose can do for cognitive capability is very valuable, extremely valuable. So make sure you're using that. In a part of the world, not as far from you as it is from us, we're going to have a launch on September the 21st. On September the 21st, Manitech is going to have a grand opening for Thailand. If you can be in Thailand for that grand opening, it will be so exciting. I know that there will be over a thousand people there. We are already doing incredible sales there. I think the launch of Thailand is going to be a really key moment for the history of Manitech. And I think things that happen in Thailand improve things all around Thailand, like Singapore and like Australia and New Zealand. So I, I just wanted you to know that we're having a grand opening. I asked Landon a couple of days ago, haven't gotten an answer yet, if he's going to live stream it. I think that that should be live streamed for that grand opening on the 21st. And I think you could probably get a great deal out of sitting behind your computer and watching that event September the 21st if you cannot be there. A tool that I use in my organization frequently is the Next Leader Level Report. I think one reason why close to me and the people that I personally introduced to Manitech and the high level of success, the high level of retention, is because I get everybody working towards their next leader level, whatever that is. 
People that I work with know exactly what they need to be at their next leader level. Publish that next leader level on people in your organization that you want to work with. When you find someone that's real excited about knowing what the next leader levels are, make sure that they're checking out themselves on a regular basis. I, I know exactly where I stand on next leader level. I make sure that many, many of the key leaders in my organization know exactly where they stand and I encourage them. They encourage me. I uh, had some people, somebody asked me a couple of days ago something that I decided I was going to include on this call. He said, Ray, why are you still so committed after over 30 years, after being almost 79 years old, why are you still working so hard? Personally, I don't look at it as work. When I have somebody like Sharon Whiteman invite me to be on a conference call, I don't look at it as an obligation, something that I have to do. I look at it as an honor. I look at it as an opportunity to be vocal about something that I have found in my 31 years with Manitech to be so valuable to mankind. I am committed to this. I'm still working with this because it has given me such an incredible life. I have a level of financial freedom that very few people ever attain in their lives, strictly because of the Manitech business opportunity. I have a level of health at my advanced stage that is far greater than friends of mine that I have not been able to talk into taking Manitech so far. I go to group to a group of people at church that we call uh, Forever Young. I told several of them recently, we need to take that out of our name tag. It doesn't fit. That maybe when we were in our 60s and early 70s, but this is the most decrepit group of people I've ever been around in my life. Look how many people are on walkers. Look how many people are on canes. Look how many people show up here in wheelchairs. If you are trying to park in the handy, one of the handicapped parking slots, and we've got about 20 of them, across the front of our church, they're all filled. It's, it's crazy how unhealthy people my age are. And the biggest reason why they're unhealthy, there's some others, but the biggest reason is they're consuming garbage on a regular basis. And if you're constantly putting garbage in your face, you're not going to have as good a level of health. We do not get appropriate nutrition. It is not available in our food. It's not available in our grocery stores. It's not available in our restaurants. We have processed everything. We green harvested everything. Finally, the AMA a few years ago said that it is prudent to supplement because you can't get what you need nutritionally from your food. So you got to supplement. When we are offering supplements to people from a company that has 150 plus patents, is really called the Scientific Nutritional Supplement Company. We are offering people a gift. We come bearing gifts. We come bearing the gift of much better health because of improved nutrition, period. No one can refute that. There's no one that can, can refute that supplementation is necessary because our food is inadequate. And there's no one that can refute that a company that has 150 plus patents hasn't been willing to spend the time, effort, and money to prove that their stuff is valuable, that it does work. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away from my notes and let Sharon get in. I know that she always thinks of fantastic things to ask, and I think she represents the people that are in her life very well, because if she doesn't ask the questions that she thinks they're gonna, they'll let her know and then she does ask. I, I've always enjoyed anytime she asked me questions because it was something that I wanted somebody to ask me. Awesome, so, Ray. So <clears throat> what else can I tell folks tonight? But, well, today? first I wanna tell you how much gratitude there is in the chat already. And, um, and everybody's cheering the live stream for Thailand so that everyone can be there. And they yeah. also want you to know that Sinead, I know, think you know that Sinead it is now um, leading us up here in Australasia and she's back and she's her and the team and obviously in partnership with U.S. Corporate have, have created a really amazing incentive for the Thailand launch. 
and it's very flexible in, in how people can uh, participate. So what's your advice and how important is it to really go for incentives? And is there any specific incentive coaching? I think the first time that I realized the real incredible value of the incentive trips was when a very close friend of mine, Karen Phillips, decided that she wanted to, her husband and herself to go on one of our incentive trips because they hadn't had a vacation in eight, nine years. And uh, she told me that the most important thing to her was to walk on a beach hand in hand with her husband. And, and she knew that if she won a certain incentive trip, that it would be very valuable for them. And she did win that trip. And what she was pursuing was taking her husband on a vacation. In the, in the process of doing that, she went to a leadership level that gave them a part-time income that she never expected to make. She had no idea that she could work with this business and make an extra $1,000 a month in income. Well, $12,000 in increase in income to any family is an increase. Well, to her family that had been living on the edge for a number of years, that $1,000 a month was dramatic. The things that they were able to do, besides the fact that they went on that trip, walked the beaches of a, of a place, got massages on the beach. And it was, I, I love watching them and other people like them having so much fun on those incentive trips. But she ultimately became a presidential and then went well beyond presidential level. And her husband got a very seri serious malady that he was, he was diagnosed in a November and February he was dead. One of the best guys I've ever known in my life. And I just loved watching the last three months of his life with the two of them. And all three of my kids got so close to them because he was such an example of how you can even have your cheese move so far that you know you're going to perish and you can have a good attitude about it. And his positive attitude, and he kept going back to the transition that occurred in his life when his wife won a vacation for them and what it did for their marriage, what it did for their finances, what it did when they their finances went to an even much better position, when they got to a position where they were frequently on stages talking to people about their history, their story, and what had gone on with Manitech, it made me decide to write a book. Uh, most people don't know that I wrote a book 20 years ago, something like that, called uh, You Can Too. And it was about 20 people in Manitech that were like the Phillipses, that had most of them had decided to win an incentive trip. And because they won that incentive trip, they knew they could win incentive trips. Not just that one, but every incentive trip that was ever thrown at them. They would be able to walk the beaches of the world or wherever else the incentive trip took them. And they could have a much greater financial position. I have said for many, many years now that we come bearing gifts. The gifts that we bear the most is better health, better finances, and a better purpose for your life. If you can give people a vacation every year or two because of an incentive trip that they win, and at the time that they win it, they're bringing many more people into a better position of health. And I can go on and on and on about how valuable incentive trips are. It's valuable to go on those vacations. It's valuable to be with the people that you care about, walk in the beaches of the world. It's valuable to be shoulder to shoulder with other people that have done that same activity. And you ask them, so what, how hard was it? And what was your best secret to making sure the incentive happened? And they get better and better at it. Consequently, when I go on incentive trips, I frequently see people that have been on incentive trips over and over again for 20 plus years now. I just love seeing them. I love being in a vacation atmosphere with them again. Where's your incentive trip going? Where's the one that was just- Thailand. So Thailand? It's for the launch, yeah. For the launch. Whoa, it's a genius. It's genius Thailand. what they've done. That is fantastic. I'll be with you. I'm going to go to Thailand. So every <laughs> one of you guys that 
get there, I'm going to be on stage talking and I'm going to be shoulder to shoulder with you. Win that incentive trip. And when you win the incentive trip, find out how friendly the Thai people are. Find out how entrepreneurial they are. Find out how easy it is to get them interested in a multi-level marketing opportunity. One especially that extends help and one that also helps by giving product to the least of these, the orphans of the world through the M5M program. You will be able to recruit some people in Thailand. If you don't know anybody in Thailand, See if you can't know some before you go, but when you get there, make sure that you meet some of them there. You can have a Thai leg. Okay, well, what is your next question? Well, Ray, you're a master at meeting people in Bump 2. So what, you know, if someone's wanting to meet Thai people right now and reach out, whether it's starting here or when they get to Thailand, what's your advice? You know, you know, a lot of people in Thailand speak English too, so... Uh, the language barrier is not going to be as much as what you might think that it is. I can go anywhere in the world. I could leave this office right now and go to a local restaurant. And I guarantee you, I'm going to talk to somebody that I don't know. And I'm going to be able to tell pretty soon if they don't want me in their space and I'm going to leave them alone. Or if they don't mind me being there in their space, I'm going to get to know them a little bit. And, and I'm, hopefully going to get a number from them and I'm going to have something that I can follow back up with. One of my most frequent things is when I see somebody that's brand new and I don't know them at all, I say, so what are you all about? And they say, what do you mean? So what's important to you? What do you do? What are you all about? And uh, I get some of the neatest answers just by asking people what they're all about. Sometimes they will become so passionate about the things that they believe in, that they love so much. Sometimes they will be very inquisitive about themselves. They'll be very reflective. You know, I don't know what I'm about. Maybe at my age, I should know what I'm about. Help me know what I'm about. I said, you just said the magic words. I can put you on a path where you know what you're all about. You know what your why is in life. You develop new whys. Life becomes so much more exciting. You develop a level of enthusiasm where you find that you're pouring out on other people around you and you love it and people are attracted to you. I love to tell people, I say, you see what I look like? And they do. And I said, do you know that I'm attractive? And they <laughs> laugh. <laughs> chuckle. I said, believe me, I had my day. There was a day that I had a really neat physical attraction. I do not have that physical attraction today. I've become too old for that. But I am attractive because mm. people can tell that I'm living life to the full. I, I'm at an advanced age and an advanced age is not a bad thing if you live life to the full. And I tell them, I, I teach people how to live life to the full. I teach them how to make enough money that they don't have to worry about budgets that never work. I teach them how to consume things that help them have a better level of health than they would have ever had before. And then I get them into a program where we help orphans all over the world. And it makes their heart just sing to be involved in a purpose like that. To me, it's as easy as opening up your mouth and getting a conversation going. And, and you got to concentrate on that conversation being for them. You're not there opening up your mouth to self-grandize yourself. You're there to self-grandize or grandize them. You're there to show them that life can be better. Most people are walking through life in ruts. They would love to extract themselves for those ruts. They drive to work every morning, trying to do three things while they're driving there. And they're seeing other people that are stressed out as much as they are. They know that they're gonna get to the office and they're going to have some kind of a conversation with somebody that they probably work for. And they're wondering, why in the world did I ever end up working for this person? They're, they're just not as bright as I am. They're not as creative as I am. Why do I have to do things on a regular basis that really go against my integrity even? And really show me that I'm not free. They'll have a death in their life and they 
hesitate to even beg their boss if they can be off to go to their funeral. They, they have such a hard time getting just a few hours off or a few days off or getting a vacation at the time that they want to go on the vacation rather than working around when everybody else is going on theirs and you can't let all those people off at the same time. I love showing people that I can give them their lives. You can own your lives. You can be the one that decides if you get a raise. If you get a raise, you're going to do it by getting somebody else more excited about your business that's already in your business or get somebody brand new in your business and you've just given yourself a raise. There's no reason why in our business you can't give yourself a raise every day. You can give yourself raises on a regular basis. You can give yourself raises to the extent that you start realizing, you know, I don't, I don't really need a raise. I need to help people in my organization get a raise. And you start developing an attitude at delighting in the successes of other people. I'm telling you, there's nothing that floats your boat better than knowing that you are helping other people get to where they wanted to be in life. And your, your push, your drive becomes delighting in the lives and the successes of other people. I, I truly have an incredible delight and the successes of other people. I love hearing the success stories of other people. I love hearing how they didn't believe in themselves and somebody that they worked with gave them confidence. In many cases in this business, people that we introduce to it are not confident. We have to be their confidence until they gain their own. We have to be with them when they get successes until they build enough success blocks that they start getting success blocks without your involvement. And they call you so excited about the success blocks and success begat success. Nothing begat success better than success itself. So you have to find that level of success that gives you something to build the next success upon. You, you get to a point where if somebody says no, it doesn't bother you at all. You know that they've got another time Another opportunity to answer properly. They just gave you the wrong answer and you can give them another opportunity later on to do that. And, and you just keep talking until somebody does. Now, I say something that I, I'm going to repeat right now and you probably heard me say before. I think as a rule, most of us cannot be pulled away easily, motivated away easily from negative and most people can't be pulled away or taken away from positive. Pretty much, you have a hard time asking the right person for that yes that doesn't give it to you. Pretty much, you have a hard time asking the wrong person for the right answer as well. That's okay. You have to understand, it is not you. It's their grounding. It's their founding. It's their basis. Feel sorry for them. Give them another opportunity later on time, but keep talking to people because you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You cannot. If you are talking to the right person, someone that in a place in their life where they would like to have better health, they would like to have better finances, they would like to have better purpose, they would like to have better freedom, you start the conversation along that line, it doesn't matter what you say, they are going to be so drawn to you. They want you to keep telling them what do I do? What's my next step? How can I get involved with this thing? What's it going to cost? I love that people say, what's it going to cost me? And I can tell in their voice, they're thinking, I hope I can afford this, you know, because this is going to have a cost. And I love to tell them, oh, we don't charge anything to people that are giving. It's only the, the people that are, are selfish that have to pay for our product. You have to pay for our product unless you're selfish. If, if you're not going to tell other people about it, then there, there's a price. But that price is covered completely for the people that aren't selfish. If you know how good the stuff is and how good the program is to the point that you're going to share it with people in your life that you care about, then you're going to end up getting a, a check from the company that's more than what you're paying for the product. So the product has a price tag that's free as soon as you recognize how valuable the product is and how neat it is to give that away. 
give that away to other people. So, and it's okay if you want to pay for the product. It's okay if you pay for the product. Just understand that you're you're exercising a level of selfishness that you might want to try to work your way away from. You know, I mean, I, I'm I'm frankly amazed at the people that buy our product month after month after month after month after month after month, after, year, after year after year after year after year. We have so many of those. They never introduce the product to anybody else. What is the deal with that? I mean, I can't go to a movie that I like without telling other people, hey, there's a movie out there right now that is so cute about landing on the moon for the first time called Fly Me to the Moon. I'm so excited to tell everybody listening to me, go see that movie, Fly Me to the Moon. It, I love telling people about good stuff. Why do people get involved with Mantech and realize how valuable the products are and they keep it to themselves? I know the answer, though. It's because a high percentage of us have been convinced as we grow up that we can't sell anything. I think part of it starts in elementary school when we start having the first fundraisers where we've got to go out and sell Christmas cards or some kind of candy or something. And we find out that some of us just can't do that. And we're demeaned in some way or another because of that. Or if we do well, we're lifted up from that. And uh, we, uh, we pretty at a pretty young age, a high percentage of us think that we cannot sell. And incidentally, for the sake of you that haven't heard me say before, I want you to know I'm a salesman. And I am <laughs> proud to be a salesman. I'm excited to be a salesman. I have never run into any company that had a vice president of sharing. They always have a vice president of sales. And, and there's nothing wrong with learning sales techniques. There's a radio advertisement right now by a guy that says that 90% uh, of salespeople have never asked for the sale one time. People that are hired by companies to be a salesperson. Well, the, the fact is, most people have to be asked to, to buy something five times before they make that decision. So you can't just stop at one time. You, you have to say, okay, what can I say next time? Don't burn your bridge down behind you and have an opportunity where you can give them more information at a later time. No, there's nothing wrong with learning sales techniques. This particular guy uh, sends out a free video on how to sell to people. I wish I'd have gotten that information. I'll get that information back to you, Sharon. Right. And then you can get people in Australia to ask for that free video on how to sell, and he'll send you a tape on how to sell. People don't know that sales usually start with some kind of an IBS, initial benefit statement. You want to say something in the beginning that shows a benefit to them about what you're about to tell them about. Then you have to give facts about your product. Then you have to give testimonies about that product, some kind of proof about the product. Then you have to ask them if they would be interested in being involved with something like that. And they're gonna usually fishtail in some way or another. And then you probe them. You're asking them questions about if, if somebody says, well, I'm not too sure that that really even works. How would I know that? And I said, well, we have a guarantee. We let you try it on your own laboratory, that body that you're living in. And if it doesn't work in your own laboratory that you live in, then you can get all your money back. So we, we let you use your own laboratory. You know, that makes me think of something that I saw in Australia near the beginning of Manifest that I liked a lot. I don't know who put it together, but somebody had a pin that they were wearing that said, we don't test our product on animals. <laughs> we're, using, we're using you. That's awesome. I think that worked real well for them too. We don't, we don't test our products on animals. We're testing it on you. We're seeing if it works on you. And, and if it doesn't work on you, we give you all your money back and say, thanks for showing us that there's some people this doesn't work on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, and Ray, I mean, obviously we're an epitome today of Murphy in the start to this. We've demonstrated how we, I had tears rolling my eyes laughing so hard. 
how do we translate into, you know, in building a business that, you know, when the cheese moves or Murphy, Murphy's having too regular a visit, what's your advice when people get discouraged? Well, I have said it for years that life is frequently taking two steps forward and one step back, then one step forward and two steps back. You're anytime you do anything, you're going to find that something that you're doing is not as effective as you would like it to be. And so you regroup and you try it a different way. You ultimately want to be making more steps forward net than the steps that you take back. And uh, I, I think in business, in romance, in you name it, in life, you have to put a foot forward. If it gets stepped on, pull that foot back and try the other foot. You know, try a different way. Don't think that you have to always do it the same way. I have a disdain for people that say, oh, well, we, we always do it the same way. Well, why do you always do it the same way? Especially if it wasn't a very effective way. Maybe you should be revising your way. And uh, I, I think that you should observe other people. One thing that's great about network marketing is that you have a sponsor and your sponsor has a sponsor and your sponsor sponsor has a sponsor. There's a chain of people that you can use to see what are some of the ways that they have done to get conversations started, to keep themselves organized. We are entrepreneurs that has some really good points to it. It has one big negative if you let it be. If you don't have to work, it's too easy to do something that you call busy work, but it doesn't really accomplish anything. So when you have control of your own life, you have to have some direction in your own life. You have to have some discipline that makes you do things that are effective. A lot of times the things that are the most effective are the things that you want to do the least. You don't mind putting all your notes together and deciding priorities for different things and sitting around with a, a book and reading about stuff that works, but making a telephone call can be hard. Just picking up the phone, just having a list of people that you want to talk to on a regular basis and then making sure that you do talk to them on a regular basis. And uh, it's, it's everything in life is just putting your foot forward. And, and sometimes you have to do it with more effort. Example, does a co-pilot ever turn to a pilot in an airplane and say, how, how much fuel do you want me to give it on takeoff? No. You always give full throttle. Every takeoff is full throttle. You get everything you have. And then you don't pull back on that throttle at all until you reach a successful attitude, a sex book, successful altitude. You want to be, you know, I think attitude fits there well also, but you want to be higher than an altitude of any buildings around you any antennas around you, and then you can pull back on the throttle. Then you can have a cruising altitude, but you have to put yourself into things. The word enthusiasm means God within, enthused to such an extent that you're pouring out on everybody else. It's usually read as high energy. People say, oh, that person's so low energy. He just talks so soft the whole time. He just never looked at anybody and he never acted like he was excited about anything. You know, well, that's a lack of enthusiasm. A lack of enthusiasm makes you a low energy person. Sometimes you have to develop enthusiasm. You have to develop a passion. You have to develop a fire in your belly. And then you have to give it away to other people so that they can also develop their own enthusiasm, their own passion. To me, success is just doing frequently what you didn't necessarily want to do. The definition of di discipline to me is frequently doing things that you know will take you to a level of success, but you don't really want to do them. You know, you just as soon not go mow the yard. I mean, definitely that yard could make it one more day, you know, and you can put off things that you know you need to do. And then when you do mow the yard and you sit back drinking a glass of tea saying, that is so beautiful. Why is grass so beautiful all at the same level? You know, 
and you just enjoy it so much and it gives you a sense of well-being. It gives you a success that you can build the next success on. Well, the same thing is true of representing something that's valuable. If you represent a number of times and you're unsuccessful, maybe you're not saying the right things. Maybe you're not giving them enough information that shows them if you don't put this stuff in your face on a regular basis, you're not going to be as healthy as you should be. Why would you want to tolerate that? Why would you want to go through life not being as healthy as you could be? Why would you want to go through life not being as financially successful as you could be? Why not give yourself a raise? I mean, there's so many people in the gig economy now worldwide that it's incredible. The, the Uber thing and a number of companies like that have shown so many people, I don't have to rely on just one effort. Well, the best gig ever is multi-level marketing because it has a residual part to it. It has a part that will continue. If you drive your car for somebody somewhere, then you've made what you're going to make with that particular customer. But if you get a person involved in a product that you take for life, you're going to be able to benefit from that effort for many, many years to come. I have people that I'm making a certain amount of money from their buying the product every month that have been taking the product for 31 years now. For 31 years, 31 years ago, I made a successful presentation to them that has made money for me month after month for 31 years. A, a very successful platinum in our company once was interviewed like this, and he was asked, so how much money did you make the first month that you were in Man Attack? And he said, I don't know. I'm still making it every month. <laughs> the, the sale that I made gave me a certain commission, but I, I made it the second month and the third month and the fifth month and the 18th month. And now we're up to the 35th month and I'm still making it. So I don't know how much money I made the first month. They're still paying me more and more every month. That's what happens with the gig economy that has ongoing sales, ongoing income. I, I think I answer every question he with did. a long answer. He, you guys will have to forgive me. But, but I want to also use that as an example. If you're not being very successful, you're not talking enough. You know, I'm, I'm successful because I talk them down until I wear them in. <laughs> I, I've had people say, okay, Ray, I'll try this stuff just to get you to leave me alone. And th those same people six months later come to me crying, telling me something that the product has done for them that they never thought that they would ever be able to get rid of in their life. I had no idea that I was dealing with that because of improper nutrition. Thank you very much for being so dogmatic about getting me to take this stuff. And then that same person, I have one particular person that called me about three years after we had a conversation like that, crying profusely because he had never made more than $50,000 a year in his life with what he was doing. And he said, I have just matched the income with my job. I'm making $45,000 at my real job. And now I'm making $45,000 a year with Manitech. I'm so excited about this. I know that with my real job, Next year, they're still going to be paying me $45,000 a year. The following year, they're still going to be paying me because they've gotten away with it for 10 years already now. But I know that next year with Manitech, I'll be making more than $45,000 a year. And the following year, I'll be making more than what I made that year. And the following year, I, and I said, so when are you finally going to get to a point where you stop putting so many, much time and effort into that stock at $45,000? He said, oh. I never thought about that. And I said, well, think about that. When you get to 90000 a year, dump your $45,000 a year job. You know, I told my son Kevin something like that. He didn't believe that he could make a full-time income with me. He said, Dad, I'm not like you. I'm not sales-oriented like you. I'm quiet-natured. I'm reserved. And uh, at the time, he was working for a temporary employment service. He had a bachelor's degree in marketing. They were working him from about seven o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, five or six days a week. They had not given him a raise in a couple of years. He got involved with Manitech and 
he sold one particular person he got involved that went to town. That person ended up becoming a platinum. That person ended up making a million dollars a year with Man of Town. That was somebody underneath that. that drove Kevin. Kevin, he has worked for years to try to catch up with what that person has done. And uh, he uh, he realized when he got to a point where he was making more with Manatech than he was making with that company where he was uh, in charge of a temporary employment service, that he won a sales incentive contest on an Alaskan cruise. And he wanted to go on that cruise. And he sent a letter to his boss that was out of state, said, I will have everything done before I go on this Alaskan cruise and I'll have it, I'll catch up on anything when I come back. You will not even know that I've been gone for that week. And the boss sent him back an uh, email that said, no, Kevin, you can't take off that week. So he called me and told me what happened. And I said, don't accept that, Kevin. Make this your time to jump. If you come up short financially, I'll help you out. Jump. Tell the guy, well, thanks a lot for helping me make up my mind. I I'm going to I'm going to go on this Alaskan cruise and I'm not going to come back to work for you afterwards. Thanks a lot. It's been enjoyable. Adios. Before Kevin went on the Alaskan cruise, the boss called him and said, Kevin, I'm sorry that I did that. In fact, I'm going to get you a $10,000 a year raise because you have done so well. And I welcome you back as soon as that cruise is back. And uh, you and I are going to get closer. You're the best I've got. I, I, I made a stupid decision. Kevin said, man, you helped me make a decision I should have been making a long time ago to do Manitech full time. I, I, I don't think I'm going to come back. And he said, Kevin, I have two kids. They told me if I don't get you back, I'm fired. Yeah. He said, it was a stupider decision than you made than I thought. He said, <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to teach you how to do Manitech. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Ray. Just I just want to jump in and say for anybody who doesn't, you know, Antec in Australasia, I think it's 26 years now. And if your upline or your support team has been destabilized, make sure you you reach out because there's lots of teams that are working together now to uh, regroup and bring Manitech Australasia back to where it should be. So we've gone a sort of over time, so even I'm not sure what time was because we started late, but what's in your heart to leave people with today, Ray? What would you like to finish with? You know, I, I really belong to God and uh, I think that my life here is getting shorter and shorter. And the more that I'm at that point, I realize more and more that I should witness my faith. So for those of you that don't have faith, look for the value of it. I really think today that it's the most valuable thing I have. And I really believe that I will live forever subsequent to here. And uh, so I, I think if I'm going to give you the best piece of advice that I can give you, and it will make you successful in every other part of your life too, make your faith real strong and see what that does for you as well. God bless you, Ray. Thank you for being Pleasure. here. There's, I'm going to send you the chat because there's just so much gratitude and, and praise for you and who you are and what you've shared today. So uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you for what you do, Sharon. I love it. Thank you very much. See you guys, everybody. I'll try not to forget to upload it this weekend. So just prompt me. I, I promise. I'll see a bunch of you guys in Thailand. <laughs> oh, good. That's so exciting, right? But yeah. that's going to help them get their goal too because they want to meet you. Fantastic. All right. See you guys. See everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.